Hi, I'm Craig Bell. And I'm John Perkins. John, Mark Twain was speaking in a town one day, and he went a little early before he was up to speak to get a haircut. And the barber, not recognizing him, asked Mr. Twain, said, hey, Mr. Twain is in town to speak. You going to go hear him? Mark Twain said, yeah, I think I will. <laughs> the barber said, well, it's sold out. You're probably going to have to stand. And Mark Twain said, boy, I always wind up standing when I go to hear that man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you could hear advice from somebody like, say, Mark Twain or, or a king, a king, if, was, if they were going to give you a one-on-one -on -one advice, wouldn't you want to listen? Absolutely. Hear what they had to say? Yeah. Well, today we have advice from a king, so hang on. For the soul, helping you thrive. Five minutes to renew your mind. Take five. King David wrote Psalm number 37 in the scriptures. And in the first five verses, he gives us some great advice. In the whole psalm, he gives us great advice, but it's 40 verses long. So look at the first five <laughs> verses here. He starts out by telling us what not to do. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, you know. Don't worry about the evildoers. God's got that all handled. He'll take care of fixing that someday. Yeah. Don't be envious against the workers of iniquity. Don't let that envy, because it may sometimes look like they've got it all together. Yeah. Things are going well for them. The psalmist is pretty plain about that in, in the psalms. How that when you look at the wicked, it seems like things are going well for yeah. them at this moment, but not forever. Don't worry about that. Don't be envious of that. But then he gives us some things in this first five verses that tells us what to do. Let me read these five verses and then we can go through that. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Love those verses, John. Amen. First thing he tells us to do is, verse 3, he tells us there, trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. Hard to trust sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. I remember, John, when, when my wife had three of our children by C-section. You had to have a lot of trust in that doctor to come near your wife with a knife, yeah. and he's going he's gonna to slice her open, you know. Yeah. There has to be a lot of trust put into that doctor. Sometimes we put more trust in a doctor or an engineer that built a bridge that we're driving across than we do God. How many times do we think about the bridge that we're crossing? We just kind of do it. We just do it. In we full just, trust. Yeah. But yet we have such a hard time trusting God. But then it's also commanded that we do good. It's action that's required. Trust is followed by effort. Yeah. You know, you can't trust without putting effort. So there's doing involved in trusting. Brother Craig, in Job chapter 13 and verse 15, one of my favorite verses of the whole Bible, it says, Lo, he may slay me, yet I will trust in him, but I will mention my own ways before him. Man, talking about trust, after Job had been through all that he had been through, he said, he may slay me, but I'm going to still trust in him. Yeah, we're told to trust in God. Job showed us what trusting in God looks like. So trust and do good. He says in verse 4, we're to delight ourselves in the Lord. The Hebrew word for delight, by the way, John, is luxurious or delicate. It's like a luxurious. So it reminds me of going out to a fine dinner. That's know? what I was just thinking. You're delighting in it. And the next part of that verse is so misunderstood because it says, and if you delight in the Lord, he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. It's almost like God will grant your wish list, but that's not what he's meaning. No. He's certainly meaning that he'll give you the proper desires that you should have. He'll implant the right desires onto your heart yeah. if you put him number one into your life. I heard a man preach on the radio the other day. I didn't know him, but he started off by saying, if you're a Christian, you can go anywhere you want to go. You can talk any way that you want to talk. You can do anything that you want to do. And uh, first thing I thought is, who is this guy <laughs> preaching? Why is he preaching that? But then I understood what he thought, that... He said, once you get saved, your desires will be doing godly things. Amen. Then he tells us in verse 5 to commit. So we have to trust and do good. We have to delight. And then he says we need to commit. Commit your way into the Lord. You know, there's a lot of people that, that are not fully committed to following Christ. They seem to want God's full commitment to them, but not giving God a full commitment back. Yeah. But the Scripture here tells us we're to commit our way to the Lord. Yeah. Commit. What's that look like, John? Well, to be to committed, to be dedicated to the gospel. The scripture says in Luke chapter 9, verse 62, Jesus said, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom yeah. of God. When God called Lot and his family out of 
Sodom and Gomorrah before he destroyed them, the Twin Cities. He uh, told them not to look back, commit to go in one direction. We have to be committed. We have to be all the way in or all the way out. And I say, let's all be all the way in for the Lord. Amen. Amen.